I'm Shannon and I'm one of the Widening Access Officers at the University of Hertfordshire and today I'm here to talk to you about your next steps. So before we begin, we're talking about you guys today and I want you to leave a comment in the chat box saying when I leave school I want to be and this could be anything from your future career goals, a course that you want to study at university. I know that we've got loads of academics and students here today that will be able to support you and start these conversations going. So we're talking about your next steps. You're currently studying for your GCSEs. Um, you're thinking about leaving year 11, leaving school behind and taking that leap into a new opportunity or um, a new world, which might be uh, A-levels, BTECs or apprenticeships. So your GCSEs can determine what sixth form or college you go to. It also has a direct impact on the courses you're eligible to study and the apprenticeships available to you as well. It could later down the line affect your future job opportunities and university decisions as well. So there's super important I know I'm, sh I'm sure you've heard that a thousand times from your teachers and from your parents that your GCSEs is a really important study hard now and it is the truth because what you can do with five GCSEs or more at a grade four and above is that you can go on to do an a any A level that you want to do a BTEC um, or a level three apprenticeship, which means that you, the world is your oyster, you've got all the opportunities. Don't worry if you don't do as well in your GCSEs if you would have, as you would have liked, because you still have options. You can go on and study a BTEC level one or a level two, and also a level two apprenticeship as well. Regardless of what, how well you do in your GCSEs, there are options and you can progress into higher and further education. So we're talking about you, your journey, and it's your choice. You've got three options once you leave once you leave school. You can either study an A level, you can study a BTEC, or you can study apprenticeship. It's completely up to you, and you need to choose something that works with your learning style. A levels are really great because you can study a range of subjects that you enjoy and that you're good at, and it's often in an environment that you're familiar with. It will be in a school setting or a, a local a local college as well. They are really well recognised by employers and universities as well. If you choose to study a BTEC, these are great because they give you a broad knowledge and skills that help you within any job and any industry that you want to go into. Fun fact, approximately one in four students study at study, studying at university have taken a BTEC. Apprenticeships are great. They're also an alternative option to either studying A-level or BTEC because you can earn while you learn. If you're super keen to get into the working world, into earning money, then an apprenticeship might be an option for you. They give you specialist knowledge and you get specialist support from professionals within that industry and, they, and you gain practical work experience through, through apprenticeships. Another fun that fact is that there's over 500 apprenticeships that you can choose from, so it's worth doing your research. So what's the difference? If you're thinking about studying an A-level, you might choose to study three separate subjects, and that is, the, that is what's most common. You choose to study three separate subjects that you're super interested in, that you're good at, and that you're passionate about. It's usually exam-based, but that's not always the case. If you choose to study something like art, you might have to submit a portfolio, um, and other, other um, courses are the same. They're graded A to E. In comparison, BTECs, you'll be studying one subject in greater depth. That's the most common route that people take when studying a BTEC. However, you can study one A-level with a BTEC as well. I know my personal experience, I chose to study BTEC in business and events management, and I wanted to do psychology on the side, and that was an option. They're usually assessment based, which means you're doing practical work experience and assignments rather than exams. But we might come on to some common myths a bit later because they're not always just assessment based. These are graded with a pass, merit and distinction. Another really important point to note on BTECs is that they are equivalent to three A levels. So regardless of which route you take, they can both lead you to university. Apprenticeships are a little bit different because you'll be in the world of work. You'll be working on average 37.5 hours a week, which means you'll be in an office environment, working with colleagues for your employer. It's very industry focused, so you'll be among others in the same industry as you and you'll be working to progress within that company. Um, and you may have one formal day of training that may, that may take place at a college or local a local school or institute. 
So when thinking about myths that surround A-levels, BTECs and apprenticeships, I'm sure a, a few, thing come, few things come to mind. So using the chat, do note down if there's anything that you thought about, you wanted to study a BTEC, but you wasn't too sure because you heard a rumor that it wasn't what you thought it was, then, then share it in the chat and I'm sure I can put some of those myths to bed. The first myth that I noted down about A-levels was that A-levels are for people who don't know what they want to do and that it just isn't true. You might 100% know what you want to do um, after you study your A-levels but you want a broader knowledge base and you want to study stuff that you're really interested in. Another one is A-levels is the only way you can get into university. And that's not true. I think we learned that one in four student, students studying at university actually took a BTEC. So any of these options that you see on screen is a route into higher education. A-levels are only available at your school sixth form is another one that we commonly hear. And that's not true. Obviously, you're studying at your school and you've heard most about your school sixth form and their offering, but it's worthwhile doing some research into other school sixth forms and local colleges as well to find out what is the most, um, the best option for you. So the myths that surround BTECs, BTECs won't get you into university. That's the one that we hear the most. Um, and that's not true. We learned it from the previous slide that loads of people study a BTEC. I studied a BTEC and still went to university. So hopefully that put that that puts that myth to bed. BTECs, um, BTEC students don't sit exams. Now this is a really tricky one because a lot of people choose BTECs because they're more ass assessment based. And that is true to some extent, but do do research into the course that you're interested in because some courses will still, will still, you will still have to take part in an exam as well. And another one is BTECs aren't acknowledged by employers. Now BTECs definitely are acknowledged by employers, I know, I know many employers that really um, appreciate those that studied a BTEC because they get hands-on practical experience. Some myths that surround apprenticeships is that they tend to be for people who didn't perform well in school, which just isn't true. You can go on and do an apprenticeship degree. People study, uh, do apprenticeships while they're in work to progress and get uh, further opportunities and um bonuses and stuff like that. Apprenticeships are for people who want to do more manual jobs. Now I think that myth comes from people that heard about apprenticeships and they was mo when they first came about they came about because they involved things like plumbing or electricity but there's 500 different types of apprenticeships that you can choose for now, you can choose to go for now. So do your research, they're in all different fields not just manual jobs. And the final one was apprenticeships don't pay very much. Now, while this may be true in some cases, we just really recommend for you to search and do comparisons on the government websites to see what apprenticeships are offering the best value for money. So where to find out more? Obviously, we're communicating and we're having these discussions today. So take as much knowledge as you can from the chat. There's loads of career professionals. Spark those conversations from today and keep those conversations going moving forward. Speak to your families, to your teachers, to your careers advisors, because they're the best people to talk to. They've been down those paths. They've done it themselves and they know how to advise people to make the best possible decisions. Speak to your friends and make those connections from as early as possible so you can find out all the knowledge and then you can make an informed decision. There's great websites like Prospects, uh, UCAS where you can search for courses and universities and um, look at their entry requirements and find out roles and also use social media. We're in the age of social media where everything is at our fingertips. We have no excuse not to know everything. So use YouTube where you can find comparisons, people that are currently studying a BTEC or an A-level do um, videos where you they verse they face off each other and do the pros and cons and find out what works best for you. Before I go, I, the biggest message is to remember that it's all about you. Use this time to think about what you're good at and play to your strengths. What do you enjoy? We work harder at the things that we enjoy, so make sure you're doing something that's that you're passionate about and that you're you're really interested in because then you'll do well at it. What might you want to do for another two years? You have to, you're legally required to stay in learning for another two years. So think about what you're going to do for the next two years after you leave year 11. And what might you do after that? So 
you might have written down in the chat that you want to go into a specific career or a specific industry. If you know what you, where you want to go and what you want to do, you can start working to build towards that. There's loads of resources online on our website and um, at your school. Make sure you're, you're talking to your teachers and um, ask them if you're unsure because they have the experience and knowledge to help you make informed decisions. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'll be available for any questions in the chat. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.